I had the pleasure of working with uh, a gentleman named Matt a few years ago. He came in on, on a Friday, limping into the clinic, told me his pain was a seven, eight out of 10, and his big toe was just killing him. He took off his shoe and showed me how red and inflamed it was. He didn't come in for a while, um, but, his, but his pain was just getting worse and worse, and his wife was begging him to come in. His wife was a patient of mine already. But he came in on that Friday, told me he was gonna run in a marathon the next day and asked me if he cut off part of his shoe around that toe to give it some room, popped a bunch of ibuprofen if, if I thought that would be a good idea, if he, if he would get uh, injured in the race. Um, I told him, well, I you know, of course can't predict that, but it didn't sound wise to me. I asked him how he hurt his toe and he didn't recall a specific you know, traumatic event you know, uh, that hurt it. It just gradually began to hurt. If he ran more than 10 miles, it would hurt. It got to where if he ran even five miles, it would hurt eventually one mile and then of course the day that I met him he, he couldn't even walk without pain so I told him I didn't think it was his big toe he looked at me like I was crazy because of course it was red and inflamed and I said uh, I explained to him you know things don't just spontaneously start hurting there has to be something else that caused that pain or caused that breakdown there I didn't have time to explain too much. It was just a quick consult, um, but I really wanted to help him out. And so um, I said, well, if you don't mind me uh, just getting to work, I, I think I can fix this problem. And uh, watching the way he walked, I could tell he was moving in a way that was putting too much pressure on that toe. And so to take a load off of that, if you consider uh, this was his left big toe, when you run and your foot is behind you, as you push off that toe, your back has to rotate a certain way, your hip extends, your knee extends fully, your ankle dorsiflexes before you finally push it down into plantar flexion and you push off that big toe. So as I did a quick evaluation of Matt's joints to find out where his deficits were, I found that he was limiting, limited in most of those joints. And so did some gentle manipulations to loosen those up. He got up from the table barefoot and walks uh, without a limp and said he only had one out of 10 pain. I had left his big toe alone and I told him that he ought to leave it alone too and in fact said that he uh, should let me tape it. So I taped his big toe to give it some extra support, told him to leave his shoe intact to not cut it, popped some ibuprofen and good luck on his race because I knew I wasn't going to talk him out of, out of the marathon that he had been training for for so long. It was nice to have him come back and give me a, a fruit basket, but was what was even more fun for me was when he came back four months later with a different problem, it was his knee. And I asked him about uh, his toe and the race and how it went, and he said he made it through mile 20 with no pain, and the last six miles of that marathon uh, were tolerable, uh, that, such that he was able to finish. I asked him how long he, it was before he was running pain-free again, and he said over the next three weeks, he did the three or four exercises that I taught him um, and was running pain-free. Now, whether that happens insidiously or, you know, or slowly, um, you know, as like an overuse type injury as opposed to a traumatic one, it doesn't really matter. I worked with a neighbor named Amy who called me to see if I can come over and check out her toe because she caught her toe walking downstairs eight months pregnant and was worried that she had broken it. Um, I told her I didn't have x-ray vision, but I can come over and take a look at her toe. I didn't think she had broken it, but uh, you know, turf toe is, is a pretty significant injury and she had the same sort of problem. Her hip wouldn't extend properly, her ankle wouldn't move properly, and so I left her toe alone, did gentle manipulations for her hip and her ankle, taught her how to keep the motion, and she got up from the floor of her living room and walked without a limp as well. Neither of them needed to come back for treatment. Uh, they were both great about doing, taking the advice I'd given them and doing the exercises and both healed uh, with just simple exercises done at home. I'm Benjamin Hill with Mission Physical Therapy.